All right, welcome back. We'll be solving the fifth question now. The equation of a curve is y is equal to 2 cosine x. We're going to sketch that curve between negative pi and pi. And if you change that to degrees, that's negative 180 and 180. And we're also going to state the coordinates of the point of intersection with the y-axis. So let's break down y is equal to 2 cosine x. The 2 in the beginning tells us about the amplitude, the highest... Um, or the maximum height the wave would get. And then between the cosine and the x is a one. And of course, we don't really write the one, and that is the period. And that is the number of waves between zero and 360, or zero and two pi. And then you have plus c, but in this case, there's no plus anything, but that plus something would be the x-axis shift. So instead of it starting at, at y is equal to zero, it starts at like y is equal to two, for example, if it was plus two. But anyways, now we just need to sketch it out. So Use a ruler, of course, and a pencil when you're doing that. And now we need it, of course, between negative pi and pi, so you don't have to add that. We're just going to place it in the calculator, and before that, we're going to use rads. We're going to change it to rads and not degrees, because that's what the question is asking for. So 2 cosine 0, the first thing is going to be at 2, the first point. Then 2 cosine negative pi is going to be the same as 2 cosine pi. It's just going to be in opposite ends. So for that one, it's going to be negative 2, and for pi, it's just going to be also negative 2. And you're just going to sketch out the curve and make sure it's a continuous line, not like what I'm doing. I'm just going over it many times and erasing, and make sure that it's actually, um, that you use the pencil and press on the paper lightly, not too hard, so you can erase if you need to. But other than that, that's all you had to do for this question, and then find out the coordinate or the point of the intersection with the y-axis which is 0 and 2 and that is a total of two marks. Alright so on to the second part. Points p and q lie on the curve and have x coordinates of 1 over 3 pi and pi respectively. Find the length of pq correct to one decimal point. So we already know the x values which they gave us and now we just need to find the y-axis. So 2 cosine 1 over 3 pi. That gives you 1. And we already know what q is because we found it in the first part of the question, which is pi uh, and then negative 2 is the y-axis, or the y-coordinate. So now the length of pq, you're going to use the formula, um, the distance formula. So under square root 1 over 3 pi minus pi, open bracket squared, plus 1 minus negative 2, the whole thing squared. And you just solve that using the calculator. then pq is equal to 3.7 and again to one decimal place so be careful with that and that is a total of two marks that's it all right so part three the line through p and q meets the x-axis at h h zero and the y-axis at k zero k show that h is five over nine pi and find the value of k so we're always going to start by writing the, what we need to find out first and um what we know and then what you're going to go do is go to this drawing that you sketched out in the beginning and you can like place the points there to visualize it but of course make sure you erase it afterwards because it's not part of the first question you could lose marks all right so where it crosses the x-axis is the point h and i'm just going to extend here the drawing and where it meets the y-axis is k so in order to find h and k, we need to get the equation of the line pq. And we're going to use y is equal to mx plus c. m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. So since we have both points, we can find the gradient. You're going to use the equation where it's just like um, the y-coordinates, you're going to subtract them by, by each other over the x-coordinates, you're going to subtract them by each other. So it's going to be 1 minus negative 2 over 1 over 3 pi minus pi. And that will give you 3 over negative 2 over 3 pi. But the thing is, you don't want to end up with a fraction under the fraction or a fraction in the denominator. So what you're going to do is multiply. So, so, you, so you know how it's 3 divided by negative 2 over 3 pi. It's the same thing as saying 3 multiplied by 3 over negative 2 pi. Pi is going to be at the bottom this time. You're just going to switch it. 
So then 3 times negative 3, that's negative 9. And of course 3 is going to be 3 over 1 because anything divided by 1 is just that number. And then 1 times 2 pi is just 2 pi. So the answer is going to be, uh, for the gradient, is going to be negative 9 over 2 pi. Make sure the pi is at the bottom with the 2. Alright, so y is equal to negative 9 over 2 pi x plus c. Now we need to find c and all you have to do is just pick out one of the points, either p or q. You're going to substitute. So x is going to be, I took q for this um, time, for this, because it's, it's a lot easier to use simple numbers. So the x in this case is going to be pi and the y is going to be negative 2. We're just going to substitute it and we're going to place it in the calculator. So negative 2 is equal to negative 9 pi over 2 pi plus c because again we multiplied that pi so it goes to the top. The two pi's they'll just end up crossing out because well pi divided by pi is just 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. So negative 2 is equal to negative 9 over 2 plus c. Move the negative 9 over 2 to the other side and c is equal to 5 over 2. There you go, we have the equation. But now we're not we're still not done though. We need to find what h and k are. So so it means the x-axis at h, so if um, y is 0, then what would x be? Simply move 5 over 2 to the other side, so it's going to be negative 5 over 2 is equal to negative 9 over 2 pi x. Then you're going to divide negative 5 over 2 by negative 9 over 2 pi, and that will give you x. And what is x? x in this case is h and that would give you 5 over 9 pi and that is actually correct because it shows us or it tells us in the question to show that h is 5 over 9 pi. So I'm just going to place that in the calculator because it just makes it that much easier and there you go, 5 over 9 pi. Alright, so then the last part which is the easiest part and find what k is, we're simply going to make x equal to 0 and of course anything multiplied by 0 is 0 right away. So y, or k in this case, is equal to 5 over 2, and that's it. And that is a total of 3 marks, and we are done with this question, and on to the 6th. Alright, so question 6. The horizontal base of a solid prism is an equilateral triangle of side x centimeters. The sides of the prism are vertical. The height of the prism is 8 centimeters, and the volume of the prism is 2,000 centimeters cubed. Express h in the terms of x and show the total surface area of the prism A centimeters squared is given by this little formula they gave us right now. Alright, so the first thing that I do is always draw it out because it me, helps me visualize it. So we have the volume of the prism, which is the base area multiplied by the height. And we know the base is an equilateral triangle. And we're going to find the area how by using half A, B, sine C which is the formula of it. And of course, if it's an equilateral triangle, then each side is going to be 60 degrees because 180 divided by three is 60. Or you can use the half uh, times base times height, and you're gonna multiply the whole thing by two because it's two parts if you divide it in two. And of course, there's this um, general rule with the 30, 60, 90 triangle that you should know. So you have the bottom is going to be X, there's going to be X and then square root three, and then the upper part is going to be 2x and then we're just going to use it here the same way. So we're going to substitute x for the values that we have and in this case it's going to be half of that so and it's not really numbers it's still going to be x but since the whole triangle is x half of it is half x so we're going to divide the whole formula by 2 so x square root 3 divided by 2 2x divided by 2 x divided by 2 because well the side is Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to all of them. And then we're just going to do that and we're going to find the area. So we're going to be using the formula half times base times height. So half times the base, which is half x, multiplied by the height, which is x under square root 3, and the whole thing divided by 2, all right, times 2 because it's two triangles to make the whole equilateral triangle because right now we're just using the right angle triangle and this half times base times height is for that. Alright, so we're just going to place that in the calculator and it will give us an answer of 
under square root 3 over 4. So we found the area, the base area, and now we have to multiply it by height. Oh, and of course, if you have 2x and they're multiplied, it's going to be x squared. So 1 over 3, square root 3 over 4x squared. That's the base area. Then you're going to multiply that by height, and that will give you the volume. And we already know what the volume is, and that is 2,000 centimeters squared, cubed, sorry. And now we're going to make h the subject of that formula. Simply by taking that 2,000 centimeters cubed, we're going to divide it by the base area that we found, which is square root 3 over 4x squared. Because when you want to move something that's multiplied to the other side, you're going to end up dividing. You're going to do the opposite. So we're going to place it into the calculator, and that will give you... 8,000 over the square root 3x squared, and now we have h. Now that we have h, we need to find the area of the base, and area of the prism, sorry. So I just redrew it because, again, it helps me visualize it. Alright, so we already know how to find the area of the triangle, and then we have to just multiply it by 2 because it's two triangles, and then it's three rectangles, so 3xxh. So basically 3 times length times width. Plus now the area of the two triangles, which we're going to use the formula half a, b sine c. So we have half and a and b are the size of the triangle, which is both x, so x squared, times sine 60. Half a, b sine c. The angle is 60, so when you place it in your calculator, sine 60 is under squared 3 over 2. Now that we have that, we have the general formula for the area of this prism. Now, all, the only thing we're going to do now is substitute the h value that we found into this. So, basically, 3x, then we're going to open the whole thing. It's going to be 8,000 divided by under square root 3x squared. And we're just going to solve that, and it will give us the same answer as the one that is in the question. And that is it, literally that's it. It's a total of three marks. And yeah, we're done with this first part. Given that x can vary, find the value of x for which a has a stationary value. We're going to be using differentiation, so dA over dx is equal to. See, the x squared here, we're going to take the exponent and multiply it by the coefficient. So two times under square root three over two. Those twos are going to cancel out, of course. So then you're going to have under square root three only. Then the x is alone without a co-exponent because, well, you're going to subtract 1 from the previous number. So if it was x squared, it's going to be x to the power of 1 because you took away 1. Same thing with the next one. So 24,000 over square root 3, x minus 1. That minus 1 multiplied by the coefficient, so it becomes negative 24,000 over square root 3. Then negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. There you go. Now we're going to equal it to 0 because anything to a stationary value is equal to zero. And so to get rid of this negative two expo uh, co no, exponent, to get rid of it, we're gonna multiply the entire thing by x squared. So that will give us under square root three, x cubed minus 24,000 over square root three is equal to zero. Now we're just gonna solve for x, we're gonna move to the other side. Same thing that we do all the time. So x cubed is equal to 8,000. And this cube root of 8,000 is 20, and that is it. So when x is equal to 20, a has a stationary value, and that is 3 marks. Alright, so now for triple i. We're going to be doing the same thing we did in double i. We're going to take the dA over dx, and we're going to differentiate even more. So it's going to be d squared a over dx squared. So dA over dx was under square root 3x minus 24,000 over square root 3x minus 2. So, 1 times square root 3 is just going to be square root 3, and 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so x is gone in this case. Now, negative 2 times the negative 24,000 over that, we're go it's going to be positive, right? So, it's going to be 4,800 over square root 3x minus 3, because negative 2 and minus 1 is negative 3. So we found that now, and we just need to find the stationary value. So, what that means is that we're going to substitute x with 20. We're going to figure out whether this value was maximum or minimum. So, we're going to place that in the calculator, and that would give you a positive number. So, 
it's going to be greater than zero. And if it's greater than zero, then that means it's a minimum. And that's it for this question. Boom, two marks.